And they said, Behold, we found him. He's at Dothan. He's at a city called Dothan. So this king sent a whole army, a whole army, to surround Dothan and him it in to capture one tiny five foot seven prophet. The devil is scared of supernatural people. And uh, so, so, so in the nighttime, they surrounded the town. And in the morning, Elijah was still asleep, and the young man got up, and he got up on top of the house, you know, yawning and stretching out his arms and looking around and wondering what the day was going to be like. And all at once, he was just shocked. And he saw all this army and all these people around him. And, and he went back in and woke Elijah up. He said, come out here and look, come out here and look. He said, he said we're goners, we're goners. Oh my, oh, come look, we're surrounded, we're taken, we're captive. And Elisha walked out there. You know, when you know God, you can be calm. And uh, he said, yeah, you see him. He said to the young, but, but that there be more be for us than be for them. And imagine this young man saying, uh, now let me check my mathematics. Uno dos. Uno dos. Uno dos. If I can add right, you and I make two. And I see hundreds and hundreds of armed soldiers around. And Elisha prayed, and it's my prayer in these days. Lord, open his eyes. Open his eyes. There's more than this world. There is another world. Open his eyes and he may see. The Bible says that the Lord opened the young man's eyes and behold, a round about Elisha, all around, beyond, behind all those soldiers were chariots of fire filled with flaming angels. There is an army helping us in our day. There is an army helping us in our day. Angels are sent out. Listen, the Bible says, the Bible says that God, in Psalm 34, the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him. You may not see him, but he's there. He encamps round about you to deliver you, to help you. Thank God, thank God, thank God. We got helpers. We're not alone in this world. We're on the business of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and He has commanded the angels to go. Listen to what the Bible says. And, and, and Psalm 91 11 says, And God has charged His angels. God has charged his angel. There's someone, God charges somebody, they listen. God has charged his angels to watch over you in all of your ways. But the one I want to talk about this morning is angels, a subject seldom covered. Angels appear in scripture from the Garden of Eden to the book of Revelation. They're mentioned more than 300 times. They have purpose and power that affect your life and give you the ability to have the winner's edge. During the dark days of World War II, Captain Eddie Rickenbacker and his crew ran out of gas flying their B-17 and they ditched their plane in the Pacific Ocean. For weeks, no one heard of them. The newspapers reported his disappearance and across America, thousands of people were praying. Mayor LaGuardia of New York asked the whole city to pray for Eddie Rickenbacker. Eddie Rickenbacker and the six survivors told this story when they were mirac miraculously rescued at sea. Quote, a seagull came out of nowhere and lighted upon my head, said Eddie Rickenbacker. I reached up very gently and caught him. We killed him. We thank God for him, divided him equally and ate even the bones. He said that seagull saved our lives and I have no other explanation in that God sent one of his angels to bring that seagull out to sea.
because there was no reason for that seagull to be there. Angels shut the mouths of lions for Daniel in Lions 6.22. The Bible in Daniel 6.22, for the Bible says, My God has sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lion. Angels delivered Peter out of Herod's prison where he was under 24-hour guard. The church was praying for his release. Matthew 4 says that angels ministered to Jesus when he fought Satan in the wilderness. When Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, the angels came and ministered unto him. In Acts 10, the angels came to the house of Cornelius and said, your prayers and your offerings have come up for a memorial before God and God's going to answer your prayer. In Hebrews 1.14, it says that angels are ministering spirits that God has sent to guard the righteous. There is an angel assigned to every believer. Matthew 18.10, Jesus said, For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father. Their angels always see the face of my Father. Angels bring answer to prayer, as in Daniel 9, as in Gabriel bringing the answer to Mary. That child that you're carrying shall be called the Son of God. In Acts 10, you, Cornelius, are going to hear the gospel message for the first time. When you die, angels are going to escort you into the presence of God. In Luke 16, Jesus tells the story of Lazarus, who was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. One moment he was begging for crumbs and the next moment he was being ushered in the arms of angels into the very presence of God hallelujah from crumbs to the marriage supper of the lamb give him praise and glory I do not believe in angels because Hollywood is now producing movies about angels I do not believe in angels because someone told me about an angel I do not believe in angels because the new age is now angel happy and they're saying that UFOs are really angelic beings that are going to snatch people off the earth. I believe in angels because the Word of God says they are real and I believe the Word of God is absolutely true. That's why I believe in angels. Angels are created beings. Colossians 1.16 says, For by Him, speaking of God, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, things visible and invisible. So angels are created of God. Angels have superior knowledge. 2 Samuel 14 and 20 says, My Lord is wise according to the wisdom of the angel of God to know all things that are on the earth. Angels know all things that are in the earth. They don't know the day nor the hour that Christ is coming, but they know everything else. Angels are without number. Hebrews 12 and 22 speaks of an innumerable company of angels, for they are innumerable, they are invisible, and they are invincible. Angels surround the righteous. Now think about this. David writes in Psalms 34 and 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Think about that. Psalms 91 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep, that's a military term, to keep you in all of your ways. Think about that. The President of the United States has the secret service that surrounds him, the best shots in the world, and are trained to defend him. But every one of you who name the name of Jesus and are called according to his word have angels who go before you to prepare your way and angels who are behind you to be your rear guard. All the President has is a secret service. You have an angelic bodyguard that can protect you from the powers and principalities of darkness. Many of you just don't see them. You don't feel them, but they're there. The point is this, if angels can shut the mouths of lions for Daniel, if angels can deliver Peter from prison, if angels can bring angels food cake to Elijah, if angels minister to Jesus in the wilderness, if angels minister to Jesus in Gethsemane, if the angel of God has been assigned to you to guard you night and day that sees the face of God every day, may God open your eyes, child, may God open your eyes, child of God watching this television program, to know that you have been created a little lower than the angels. The royal blood of heaven is flowing in your veins. You are a child child of God. Armies cannot defeat you. Hell cannot defeat you. Hell cannot defeat you. Demons cannot defeat you. The powers and principalities of darkness cannot defeat you. Put on the whole armor of God. Stand up and fight the good fight. The victory is ours through Christ the Lord.
you know, inspiration. That's good. You got to be inspired about things. But listen, it's far more important to have information than inspiration. Because when you have the information, you know why you have the inspiration. And we want you to know who you are and what you have and what God has provided for you. We want you to be able to stand up and be strong in your spirit man. You need to get this down on the inside to where the devil cannot defeat you. Bible says, pray for this cause I bow my knees unto the God and Father, my Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, uh, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, and he would grant you to be strengthened with might by your spirit in the inner man. And, and one of the things that God teaches us here in the book of Hebrews is that Jesus is better. I mean, we are privileged to live in the better covenant. And one thing he discusses here is how much better Jesus is than just the, the angels of God. But now in that, I'm reminded to stop and teach on the fact that there are angels about us to watch after us. You know, I've been teaching a long time about those scary, ugly goblins over there in Hebrews chapter, I mean, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter six, those master spirits that rule this world these spirits without bodies, these awful demonic powers that, are, that we're subject to and attacked us. And, and, and I preached a long time on that until I got to thinking about it. Boy, there are a lot of ugly guys out there. I mean, uh, uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in high places, against the master spirits that are rulers of this darkness. There is a great malignant power that comes against the human race. And it is supernatural. But I've got good news for you. They're not only supernatural enemies, they're su supernatural helpers. Jacob's ladder, he, he had a dream, and there was a ladder set up from earth to heaven, and angels, the angels of God, were ascending and descending. Ascending and descending. Now, I know there are angels in heaven, I know that, but this tells me they're ascending and descending, that their abode is on the earth. They're going up, but they're coming down. Didn't say they're coming down and going up. The angels have been dispatched into the world to watch after the people of God. They're in the world They're to, to watch after us. Are they not ministering spirits sent for us? Thank God he sent them for To care for and to minister for those who are heirs of salvation.